Jeremy Towell's work speaks on landlessness, on displacement, on the struggle, pain, and fears of life. And it is within this multitude of emotion that we find the magnitude photography can have. From Gaza and the West Bank, to rural Mennonite communities, disappearances in Guatemala, to Afghan combat zones and Ukrainian radioactive wastelands, these are the powerful images of Larry Towell, a poet who lived on a homemade raft, a singer who wrote protest songs in the middle of combat zones, and of our interest today, a photographer. Do, 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 do. who originally studied creative writing and visual arts, admitted that, quote, clearly I was a better photographer and the doors opened with photography. In the 1980s, Towell, who thought folk music at night school, occupied most of his days documenting the violent Nicaraguan Contra War and the wave of massive disappearances and passings caused by the silent Holocaust during the Guatemalan Civil War. The magnitude such images have, in my eyes, is that these speak on how merciless life can be to those who live filled with the pain and the profound uncertainty about their family's whereabouts. Living their lives, therefore, guided by this cruel sense of false hope. These images illustrate, therefore, a physical pain, but also an emotional and psychological one. And, above all, how visceral this feeling of missing can be, of the not knowing. And this is perhaps why the doors of Magnum open to Towel due to his ability as a photographer to capture the most profound feelings that linger beyond the cruel surface of a given scene. In his words, Towel describes that, quote, in those years, in Canada, it was impossible to publish a photo book, and there was no photojournalism to speak of, and very little photography. When I got into Magnum, that opened up another world. A world, I suppose, would be made, in my perspective, of no man lands, where people's lives hang on a scale between life and death, between safety and survival, between the most profound abyss and hell itself. And one of the first so-called no-man lands that the photographer documented was Palestine, whose people's suffering still echoes today. Yet again, these images go beyond what is physical. His work manages, therefore, to illustrate the material and the immaterial walls that divide two people. And while the photographer does feature the people and the heavy price they pay, there is also a focus on the land and how it remains a witness for said division. Destroyed buildings, for instance, or unfinished roads, stand as remains of an existence that could have been. And this idea of a land divided against itself is perpetuated even in the most recent work the photographer has released, particularly under Magnum, titled Closing Standing Rock, around the North Dakota Access Pipeline project, which caused uproar and indignation around local communities due to its environmental and cultural impact on the land. These communities stayed in protest and erected provisional protest camps, which were essentially prayer camps amongst the native communities near Lake Oahe. However, on February 22, 2017, the deadline came to an end and the removal of these camps started while people cried, prayed and said goodbye to what had been their homes. Some even set these structures on fire, a ceremonial fire, shall we say, that could perhaps protect them from the disrespect to the land. And on April 26, 1986, the number four nuclear reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near Pripyat in modern-day Ukraine exploded as a result of a power surge during a systems test. 
The event known as the worst nuclear accident in history forced the relocation of hundreds of thousands of people from a 30-kilometer zone around the power plant, also known as the Chernobyl Zone of Alienation. In recent years, this zone's residents have remained there for different reasons. Some have in fact never left, while others come displaced by conflict areas in the east and others yet are lured by the cheap housing. Suffice to say that associated to these images captured in Ukraine is a grave weight of silence the silence of a land absolutely devastated by a level of radioactiveness that it cannot recover from. A contagious silence left by the disappearance of its population. A domineering silence that emerges from the abandoned homes, personal belongings, family pictures, and partially destroyed infrastructures left behind. And now, I'd like to take a moment of your time to talk about today's sponsor, Wondershare Recover It. So for those of us photographers who depend on capturing and storing our moments, data loss can be a real nightmare. Whether it's due to accidentally deleting something, a corrupted memory card, or even a system failure. And Wondershare Recover It therefore provides an all-in-one data recovery solution. It can retrieve over a thousand different file types, including videos, photos, audios, from different storage devices, whether that is SD cards, hard drives, you name it. So whether you're a photographer, videographer, or simply someone who values their data, recover it is very reliable, at least it has been in my experience. So if you've ever faced that sinking feeling of losing high quality content, recover it can definitely help you with that. And their newest version further elevates this experience. So if you'd like to try it out, recover it offers a free trial and it's very straightforward to use. Simply download the software, scan your device and recover your lost files. It's that easy. So if you're looking to learn more, check out Wondershare Recovery as the link is in the description. Now let's go back to our video. This idea of landlessness manifests itself yet again in a different angle through the work around the Mennonite communities Towel developed in Mexico and Canada. And the photographer first encountered the Mennonites near his home in Ontario, as described by him literally in his backyard, which granted him a closeness that in time turned into friendship, allowing him a unique and almost unprecedented access to the life in these communities. The Mennonites, while originating in 16th century Europe, have been forced to migrate around the world in order to maintain their way of life and their freedom of expression and belief. And Towel photographed these communities for over 10 years, going back and forth between Canada and Mexico as these communities moved between these two locations due to the harsh winter conditions and whatnot. Ultimately, this culminated in a collection of the same title, The Mennonites, that according to Magnum, quote, creates a unique and intimate portrait of an often misunderstood people. And these, I have to say, are some of my favorite images because they paint a portrait of the struggles faced by this Protestant group at many levels. At first, the struggle of poverty and rural existence, Second of all, I would say the discipline and contradictions of their own religion and beliefs, and the Mennonites' hunger for land and work whilst at the same time struggling to keep the modern world at bay, which is often the main cause for their migration. Despite all the conflicts and suffering Towel has witnessed throughout his career, in his personal life, the photographer chose to reside in a quiet farming area where he also documented his and his own family's relationship to the land. This work proposes a perspective where one thinks of roots and origins. It also proposes one's manifestation in the surrounding landscape and almost simultaneously the manifestation of such landscape in one's heart and soul. These photographs, like the Mennonites, amongst the most personal and intimate work the photographer has ever produced. And just like the Mennonites, 
these images reflect on the eternal dependability between humans and their land. For this relationship forges a sense of identity, a sense of tradition, community, and ultimately, self. And this is why Towel uses photography not necessarily to build narratives or exclusively to build narratives, but to capture the depth of important existential questions, at least in my eyes. And these questions are, what happens to people when they lose their land? Well, they rebel and fight, they suffer and strain, they win and they lose, they perish and they disappear. But what is it all for? What is it worth? So, from his front porch to the most far away confines of this world, this is what Larry Towell's work reflects upon. And to us photographers, I bet you're asking what can he say or what more can he teach us? So, I think I'm going to quote you his words. I guess the main thing is, you've got to get out of bed in the morning, you've got to get on the plane, somehow you have to find how to get somewhere, and you have to be with the people you're with. That's all you can do. And not everybody is going to survive, let's face it. There are two things everyone is in this world. One of them is a photographer, and one of them is a poet. So this has been the video for today. I really would like to thank you so much for watching, for supporting the channel. I want to really send a major thanks to the channel members because um, we, all my videos have been slightly remaining behind the schedule. Um, that is for a multitude of reasons, personal, professional, but also, as you might have seen, there's a big change. I'm in a different place. So all the headaches that entails moving houses and, you know, paperwork and all of that really um, got to affect a lot of my schedule. So videos will resume now at a more regular pace, shall we say. And I'm also releasing something um, really, really soon. I'm just giving it its final adjustments um, and working on a couple more things coming up. Um, but that would be something that you guys have curiously suggested for me to do before. Um, so for those of you that like filmmaking and movies, I think you'll be very interested or potentially very interested. Um, but yeah, that's been all for, you know, today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and I hope I can continue to bring more images and more interesting folks to talk about here on the channel. So thank you so much for watching and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. My frying pan is full of grease My bathtub is full of dirty sheets